Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Doing good. So today we are talking about the Villiger 1888 Robusto. Uh, the cigar is four and seven eighths by 50 ring gauge. Um, comes out of the Dominican Republic. Uh, the factory is not listed. Uh, the uh, wrapper is from Ecuador. Uh, binder is Mexican San Andres. The filler is uh, from the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. It's uh, blended by uh, Heinrich Villiger, and the price point is five dollars ninety-five cents. And the cigar was released in December of 2016. So with the details out of the way, June, what was your pre-light experience like? Um, in terms of the look of the cigar, I thought that uh, the wrapper had a medium brown Colorado Claro shade. Um, pretty smooth wrapper, uh, faint oil traces to it. Uh, things fairly well pressed. Uh, seems, although they're visible, it was pretty tight. A uh, bunch of roll I thought was, uh, it, it was kind of the lumpier side. It just kind of felt like a little bit of a lumpier kind of a cigar. Uh, but no soft spots, uh, uniform give, um, so it made me think that uh, uh, no issues with the uh, with the draw. So uh, have finished off with a well applied triple cap. Uh, in terms of the pre light nosy experience, after wrapper I got uh, cedar hay. Uh, when I smell the foot, white pepper in the spicy cedar, and cold draw, I got hay cardboard and a little bit of aged oak. So overall, a, a good presentation. Yeah, the wrapper was like a medium brown. Uh, the veins were pretty visible, kind of because they had the um, like a, a lighter color to them, uh, but they were well pressed. Uh, the seams were nearly invisible. Um, They're very smooth. Uh, there appeared to be uh, two caps, with a top cap uh, was slightly lifting on one side. Uh, a single band. Um, I think it's meant to look like two bands because the upper section um, has the company name and the logo, and then there's kind of like a really dark um, line that goes to it. And the lower part has that uh, 1880 designation on it. Uh, the aroma from the wrapper was uh, leather and barnyard, and the foot carried a kind of a light stone fruit sweetness and a little bit of white pepper. Um, pre light draw gave me some of that same stone fruit sweetness that I got from the the foot aroma, and um, I had a little slight spicy tingle on my lips as well. So flavor wise, what was your experience like? Um, I thought the entire cigar was a uh, uh, medium in terms of body and strength delivery. Um, overall, to just kind of uh, uh, to, to kind of go through you know each third, uh, first third uh, soft delivery of aged oak, creamy bread, balanced uh, like a tongue tongue coating black pepper. Uh, retrohaling, I got uh, deeper notes of that black pepper, got some pepper, dry nuts, and cedar. Uh, finish was pretty short, uh, namely got dry wood and a subtle black pepper going on. Uh, moving on to the second third, not much change from the first third. Uh, profile, I'd say, probably got a little bit more black pepper centric, uh, but the remaining notes of the aged oak and the creamy bread still was uh, intact. Uh, Retro health continuously provided that deeper black pepper, uh, dry nuts, which is no longer peppered, uh, and that same aged cedar. Uh, finish still short, primarily dry wood and subtle black pepper. Uh, moving on to the final third. Final third. Still has that, you know, the increased black pepper and aged oak. Um, that creamy bread that I got within the first two thirds is gone and is replaced by slightly bitter dry nuts. Um, also, uh, I started getting like an intermittent underripe sour citrus note um, from the beginning of the last third. So uh, within kind of the latter half of that last third, um, that, that note dissipated. Retro still full of that deep black pepper, uh, dry nuts, aged cedar. Finish still short with dry wood and think black pepper. Um, so overall, I would say a very soft delivery of flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, as the scar started off for me, I got a mix of uh, black pepper and uh, like a slightly spicy cedar. And then after a few draws, that pepper kind of went away and the cedar lost its spiciness but gained a little bit of cream. Um, the retro was like a, a was creamy and there was a little bit of cedar in there as well. And then at a half inch in, the cedar transitioned to oak. Uh, while that cream kind of remained at the same level. Um, and there's a little bit of black pepper that had returned um, kind of as a long finish. And then at an inch in, uh, a dirty quality kind of joined in with that creamy oak. Um, it sounds kind of odd, but it was um, kind of a pleasant addition. Um, and it kind of added a little bit of dimension to the profile. Um, as the third came to a close, that creaminess increased a bit with the um, dirty oak kind of remained at that same level. Uh, and the strength was just slightly below medium for me. And then getting the second third, um, creamy and dirty oak continues on, uh, quarter inch in, uh, a slight bit of black, uh, coffee kind of joined in with the creamy and the dirty oak. Um, the retrohale consisted of creamy oak, um, and it carried a little bit of a slight char to it. 
And then at a half inch in, uh, some char came to the uh, mouth profile along with the creamy and dirty oak um, with that slight coffee still there. And then at an inch in, uh, that dirty component uh, left the profile while that char slightly increased um, with the creamy oak and the slight hint of coffee. And then an inch and a half, uh, that dirty component returned to the profile. Um, and the strength in that second third was right at medium. And then getting in the final third, uh, creamy, dirty, and charred oak uh, continue along with a little bit of bitterness that kind of might be attributed to that black coffee note. And then at a half inch in, um, the coffee and the bitterness went away uh, while the dirty and the creamy, dirty, and charred oak remain there. Uh, Retro Hill consists of dirty oak, and then at three quarters of an inch in, uh, a slight bitterness returned to the profile. And then as the th cigar came to a close, uh, that bitterness went away, uh, and that creamy, dirty, and charred oak is kind of what remained there as well. And the strength was still right at that medium level. So getting into performance, uh, burn and draw, what was your experience like? Um, very good for both. Uh, I, I just had minor complaints. Um, so in terms of burn, uh, uh, like I said, very good. Uh, total burn time, hour and 40 minutes for Robusto, which is fairly in line with uh, how uh, how long it takes me for review Robustos. Um, I just held on tight with slight flowering, uh, averaging uh, inch and a half self-tap uh, ash marks. Uh, burn, slightly uneven, but there was never a need to use my lighter. Uh, in terms of the draw, uh, I thought the draw was, it was a tad snug for my liking, uh, but... I was able to experience, you know, all the flavors of the profile with no issues. So uh, overall, very good construction. Yeah, construction for me was pretty much perfect. Um, I couldn't really ask for much more from the burn. Uh, it was razor sharp the entire way. Um, the ash dropped a three-inch mark, uh, and then it held on again until the cigar finish. So I really, you know, uh, nothing really to complain about there. Um, and the draw was perfect. Just, you know, had just the right amount of resistance that I like um, on a cigar. So nothing really to complain about there. Uh, so overall, what are your thoughts on the cigar? Uh, overall feel, um, average flavor profile coupled by really good construction. Um, I thought that there was too much subtleties. Uh, and, and really with, with that said, um, there's pretty major lack in flavor depth. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like at times even it was almost like I was just burning paper uh, mm -hmm. and I was just tasting that. Um, so with that said, I mean, uh, I like to try this in a smaller ring gauge to, in the hopes of, you know, getting more of that wrapper flavor and just kind of getting more intensity of flavors. So, but this is average for me. Yeah. Um, yes. Some of them are for me. And I mean, there's nothing that really stood out, out about the flavor profile, um, but it was really balanced and it was pleasant the entire way. Um, performance was perf perfect. Perfect. Um, Ash is very impressive. Um, it was really dense and just held on really well. Um, and even though the price doesn't factor into our scoring, uh, I think it's definitely worth mentioning here that, um, you know, it's a really fantastically budget friendly cigar. So um, for the people that, um, you know, find the flavor profile enjoyable here, um, this might turn out to be a really good daily smoke for them. Um, I think this cigar really aligns well with their La Libertad as well, because um, that's another um, really budget friendly smoke that has a, a, a nice flavor profile to it as well. Um, so I, I could see people, you know, that, um, you know, have a cigar budget that they need to stick to and, and want, like to smoke frequently that they, that this might be something that they kind of turn to for that. Uh, so getting into the scoring, uh, I gave it a 6.67. You gave it a 5.67. How do you think that matches up with your experience? Uh, it, it matches well. Um, that pretty much means it's a little, uh, it's, it's a little above average. Uh, so with that said, average in terms of first, second, last third flavor profile um, with really good construction for burn and draw. And overall, I gave it an average, so uh, it's in line with my expectations. Yeah, mine matched up well. Um, this is actually one of those cigars where, like, you know, the the sum of all the components makes the cigar better. Um, you know, it's not it wasn't just flavor. I mean, I gave it a good on the mi on the middle third, but average on the first and and final third. And I just had amazing construction, so I actually uh, rated it good overall. Um, so, like I said, I just think this is a, a really good budget-friendly cigar. Um, so, you know, it's it's something that I think people might might like. Um, so, and you know, I would definitely smoke more of these. And like you said, trying it in another Vitola would actually be interesting as well to see if um, you know you get more concentrated flavors on the smaller ring gauge or not. Um, I think if you I think if you want any any bigger in terms of ring gauge, um, you know, flavor might really be kind of watered down. Um, so it'd be interesting to, to, to check this out and some other Vitolas as well. Uh, any other final thoughts from me on this cigar? Mm -mm. 
Okay. Well, thank you for tuning in. If you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us, but also check out the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com and follow us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcast, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Uh, thank you for tuning in and we will catch you on the next one.